Wow. Jim Corn has such a jackass. Ross the Dwells. Not that far behind. Oh, hello, folks. Welcome back. I am the one, the only Hobo Tom. Um, I tried something with my laptop. My laptop sucks. I have this nice camera I got, I think, a couple of Christmases ago. I tried to set this camera up to said laptop so I could do both the reaction on my laptop and watch stuff on my computer. Eh -eh. That laptop, obviously, though. Geez, I think it is like 10 or 11 years old. That's old for a laptop. I'll figure out something for the AEW pay-per-view coming up next week. But then remember, next week I have a little bonus show. Actually, Thursday. Yeah, I'm just going to do one bonus show on Thursday. Screw that. Maybe the next week I'll have another bonus show. The five things you have to remember to do because coronavirus is ending. Or stay-at-home orders and ending. Because so I'm very quickly remembering that. It's like, oh, I should shave. I have to, I had to figure out how to put pants back on. And I don't know if you ate deodorant or what. But I'll list those later. I'm not going to talk about any of that. It's a, as you saw by the thumbnail, it's a red wine and pizza Friday. Oh, so good as red wine. And I don't have to work tomorrow. I do have to wake up quasi, quasi early. I gotta get to the banks. I just realized I have some money. I have to put in the banks. Very happy about that. You don't want to know about that. You want to know about this guy, Logan. You, sir. Holy shit. And thank you for your comment. Robert Thomas, you won by six count.
And MX. Yes. How can you forget the blue girl? I have to find a gift of that one day. That has to be a new gift. The blue girl. Indeed. I'll have to work on the blue girl. But you, sir, are a master of the air guitar. Just like the blue girl, I'm sure, is master of the air drums. So let's talk about some SmackDown. This SmackDown actually went by, went by fairly quickly. I was kind of shocked by it, though. I think it was because there was like a good 15 minutes. There was a recap of the Money in the Bank match that happened in Titan Towers. It's always good to see that. And the Miz TV. Ooh, I didn't have a nap. I was busy all day today, too. Yeah, I'll try and go to bed before midnight. That's reasonable, depending when this gets done. But, um, so, uh, Miz TV with Otis. And then Miz just makes fun of Otis. Um, so, how come you got the belt? Otis is just... Otis is just... Otis. And he uses his briefcase, briefcase like a lunchbox. That's, that's, he has sausages, some beer, some snacks in there. That's a good use of that briefcase. And I don't know. Does Mandy Rose like him because of the briefcase? It would be interesting to see if he loses a briefcase. If Mandy Rose says, oh, you're just a nice guy. Yeah, only because I went to Super Target today. And wow. There was that 30-year-old dressed up in a schoolgirl outfit with a sports bra and that $2,000 hooker there. So with the rest of SmackDown, so the first wrestling match we have, we have, oh, walk with Elias. Pick a king, the possum king. Aaron Corbin. That is one of the funny things Jim Cornette's called, called people. The Possum King and my dog pockets. Possum King's pretty good, though. I like that line. Uh, for the most part, this was a very brawlish match um, to begin with. A lot of neck locks by Corbin and 12 6 elbows. Uh, it. it, it, it for the most part, degraded into rest lock mania with sections of outside outside the ring wrestling. Uh, then Corbin again tries to play the guitar outside. Uh, however, this upset Elias. Only Elias goes, and then we're back in the ring. And this wrestled mania. Elias has Corbin in a chin lock. Elias then tried to walk the ropes. He's like, walk with me. I don't know if it was because he would normally say, walk with me when he walks the ropes. Or if he's like telling Baron Corbin the spot, hey, walk with me. So I don't know what that was. Again, it's that weird time where there's no crowd 
and you can hear everything, so I'm not too sure if he's telling him the spots or what. I don't know. Uh, then Elias, he tried to walk the ropes and he got crotched because Baron Corbin doesn't know how to walk. Let's see here. Then, then Corbin, when they go to the, get to the outside, Elias winds up on top of the table. Corbin delivers some fists on top of the head of Elias, who's on top of the table. Uh, Corbin, uh, Elias eventually hulks up, tears off his shirt, his tank top. Actually looks pretty good. It looks very, um, oh, very Rage Against the Machine-ish, that first album. Almost like that. Where it just has him and like that yellow and red background. That actually, it's actually a pretty cool looking cover t-shirt. Uh, so he hulks up, hits the drift away, but only got a two sweet count. And then Baron Corbin did a man spine buster. Uh, eventually a choice a choke slam. Then Corbin smashes the guitar. However, Elias is the master of the roll-up. And Baron Corbin, you did not graduate from wrestling 201 which is Escapes of the Roll-Up. Or 202, I'm sorry. But that's where they teach you how to escape the roll-up. Man, It was a ham sandwich of a match. Elias advances into the tournament. Oh, yes, they're also going to have an intercontinental tag team, uh, intercontinental tournament. Because Sami Zayn, I guess, is vacated the belt. He's like, I'm relaxing at home. Because I guess WWE has said, you want to relax at home? We're cool with that. Wait, you're here? You're here? We're going to push you two guys. You at home? We'll pay you. Just tranquilo. And give us your belt. Uh, so there's a tournament going on. It's the brackets. We saw two of the matches. It was Drew Gulak. Versus Daniel Bryan, and then we had Sheamus, Jeff Hardy. This was one Elias versus King Corbin. Then we have Shinsuke Nakamura versus AJ Styles. My early prediction oh, please, someone in WWE, listen to this. Oh, listen to this humble beseechment. Please, Daniel Bryan versus. A. J. Styles. Please. I'll even take Shinsuke Nakamura versus Daniel Bryan. Please. So, yep. So, we're going to have two of those matches this weekend, two of the matches next weekend. Uh, we'll probably get to the semifinals. Well, a week. I want to say backlash. Is supposed to be. Does that make sense? Does that is that my guessing? The nineteenth, I think. No. I know it's supposed to be in the middle of June. I just forget when in the middle of June. But that's okay. I just had to check out my calendar for a moment. I have no. Listen, I'm just happy. I know today's Friday. And tomorrow's Saturday, and I can tranquilo because my cat's already asleep on the couch. It's see her. You want to see her just sleeping on the couch? One day I'll get things organized. Well, there's a chair. Let me move the chair. Chair right away. There she is, folks. So now let's go back to normal view. There we go. Yep, that's somewhat better. Put that chair back there where it should, because actually these chairs get shifted back over. It kind of like shifts this way or that way, depending on what I'm doing. Then we had Seamus backstage. He saw Otis, because Otis is, remember that was a challenge. Otis has to look for a tag team partner. Seamus said, whatever. It's like, yep, sorry. Not a chance, fella. Uh, Louis Lucas was Mandy Rose. He saw Mandy Rose back there. Then he saw. Then there was the hacker thing. 
I think it's CM Punk. CM Punk. I just want to hear when they show the hacker. It's a cult of personality. You know he could come back. Vince. Right now, Vince, I think, would welcome any big talent or name with open, open arms. Please come back. That's okay. Then Otis talks to Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman gets ready. Then we had another match. Naomi taking on Dana Brooke. Oh! Wow! Naomi! Oh! She had that less than one piece bathing suit on. That like weird cut out bathing suit. That makes her look so amazing. But, oh, then Dana Brooke, she just looks like she got out of the plastic surgeon's office. I do have to agree with Jim Cornette with this. Carmella, and this is pure speculation and, and, and utter garbage. Carmella and Dana Brooke look like they just got out of the plastic surgeon's office. Because Carmella's showing off a lot of booty recently and a hip. Without showing out hip bone. Oh, that's a good thing. Dana Brooke looks like she just went under the knife and had, like, injections. Dana Brooke's still hot, though. Uh, Dana Brooke, for the most part, was holding her own against Naomi. Naomi would try. But then there was, like, a weird roll-up. It's like, yeah, it was, like, like one move into a quick roll-up. Dana Brooke wins. Are they pushing Dana Brooke? Honestly, I was munching on pizza and, and drinking red wine at the time. So, I honestly missed most of that match. And it was a short match, too. I want to say both women's entrances took longer than the match itself. This was a can of soup. And I feel bad saying that about Naomi and Dana Burke, but I'm a straight shooter. I call it as it is. And there was a little Becky Lynch recap. Again, congratulations, Becky. And Seth, good luck. Because, and I don't know, maybe you, the YouTube universe, can answer me this. I know they're engaged. Are they married, though? Again, like I said last time, that's a big thing in Irish families. If you're not married and you have kids... People look at you. Yeah. I know they're engaged. But that doesn't mean anything, though. Unless they were planning to get married, like, next month. I could see that. But because they've been pre quiet by eggs, no clue. And, hey, that's our own personal life, too. I mean, they, they could have, they could have, they could be planned. They can be plans to wed this weekend as far as I know. And this is just a happy coincidence. However, being the skeptic that Hobo Thomas, I don't believe in happy coincidences. <laughs> I think there were... Oh, who was it? Uh, Brian from the Jim Cornette shows. So, so, so how, how many superstars has Seth fucked over for his title? Oh, wow. And then there was another wrestling meme. John, uh, Dean Ambrose pulled out of WWE. You know where this is going. Roman Reigns pulled out of WrestleMania. Seth Rollins doesn't know how to pull out. Oh! Yeah, you knew where that was going. Uh, so there's that whole recap. There was a Becky promo. And then a Sasha and ba Bailey came out. Oh! Sasha Banks! Wearing that leopard print cut out onesie. Stripper. <clears throat> Sorry. I don't know what the I don't know what came out of I promise you it's not coronavirus. It's like, like stripper. Virus, yeah. Or something like that. Then there was a Forgotten Sons promo. Uh, that's okay. The views of WWE are not the views of the Forgotten Sons are not necessarily the views of WWE. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, whatever. I don't think they they didn't. Oh, they didn't curse that much. 
It was a little light, 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 light profanity. Nothing terrific. And Renee, what are you doing back in WWE? You were let back after your cameo at AEW Dynamite. Oh, Renee, Renee, Renee. She, she looked different too. This time she looked all dolled up. She looked all dolled up. And I'll tell you what, I don't know what it is. <sighs> With the exception, I want to say of Bianca Belair for whatever reason, all of the women superstars. Well, well yeah, Charlotte. Charlotte never looked that pretty, though. Charlotte, Bianca Belair. Who else? I can only think of those two. Those two are the only ones that look prettier with their makeup on than without. Tegan Knox looks great without her makeup on. Renee Gonzalez is great without her makeup. Um, uh, uh, Jessie's great without her makeup. All the NXT girls, except for Bianca Belair, are amazing looking without their makeup. Becky Lynch, when you see her without her makeup, looks absolutely gorgeous. She just actually not not so much gorgeous. She just looks so cute. Sonya Deville actually looks pretty hot without her makeup. So does Lacey Evans. Cause I saw those two at the gym. That's an old story. I saw those two at the gym. They were working out. I was confused. They had a terrible match, and the only reason I knew is because of the tattoo. Who else looks creepy? Reed Ripley looks hot without her makeup. Carmella looks cute without her makeup. Alexa looks adorable without her makeup. My Jax actually looks pretty, pretty good without her makeup too. So does Tamina. Bailey looks completely different. Sasha Banks doesn't even look like anyone. Maybe Sasha. Maybe Sasha joined Charlotte and Bianca Belair. Nikki Cross. I don't think Nikki Cross wears makeup. I think she's just. God, she's just a. Just a you almost want to pinch your cheeks and say, You're so cute! Then you want to pinch your other cheeks. So you're so hot. But that's okay. So then the next match we had. I'm losing it not right now. Uh, we have Drew Gulak versus Daniel Bryan. This match was a pro wrestling match right out of the textbook. This was amazing. So the handshake, very technical. This was Chikara versus Ring of Honor. This was good. Uh, they would trade moves, very technical. The yes lock. Uh, then they go into the ropes, and then, then Drew Gulak put the Gulak on, and then... You'd go into the ropes. They, they trade some more moves. Amazing chain wrestling. M not even spot, but just move after move after move with smooth transitions. Very smooth counter wrestling. Uh, Daniel Bryan, he reversed the fall. And he, he reversed the fall Nelson into the Hobo Breaker! Also, also known as the Danielson Special. But this is a Hobo Breaker! Oh, yes. It's, it's a butterfly suplex into the armbar. And then Drew Gulak reversed that into a crucifix pin. I was back and forth. Wrestling! Very few strikes were traded. When they were, they were mainly leg strikes. But they were leg strikes that made sense. And really, Daniel Bryan do that. Uh, Drew Gulak, the much more technical wrestler, the more wrestling move wrestler. Uh, the huge belly to belly. And into the full Nelson working over the neck of Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan going over the shin breaker, the dragon screw Lebwick. Uh, into the ankle lock. Every so often he'd throw in the yes kicks here and there. So that was expected, but that like I don't even think there were forms or European uppercuts or even punches. This was straight mat wrestling. This is a technical wrestling match. Everyone should watch. Uh, so it was a shin breaker into the dragon screw leg, leg whip into the, the ankle lock. Drew Gulak would get some sensation back. It would be the gulak into the label lock. Again, so much back and forth. And then there was an ankle buster into a legitimate heel hook. And that's what I like about this, because this heel hook looked look legit. Um, 
Daniel Bryan won in an amazing technical match. They shake hands afterwards after the interview. By Daniel Bryan, that interview made it feel super sports-like. If this match was a hair bit more physical, maybe a little bit on the outside, maybe they just get a little bit testy with each other. There was no testiness in this match. It would have been a flaming on match, but instead, I'll tell you what, this was still a really good surf and turf match. And then there was a boo, Sonya Deville promo. Boo, boo, this was good. Boo, I don't care. Boo, boo, Sonya Deville. And then she did like that lip, that tongue lip thing. And I'm like, oh, baby. You just want Mandy Rose all to yourself. But I digress. Then in the main event, we had The Miz and Morrison taking on Otis and Braun Strowman. Uh, Braun is pretty good. Uh, whatever Miz tried to do to Otis wasn't going to happen. Braun and Morrison started the match. They're like, no, this isn't happening. Uh, then Braun tags in Otis. Morrison tags and Miz. Otis just no sells, whatever. <laughs> he just no sells. But whoa, that flapjack by Morrison. That was good. I see that flapjack on Morrison. Yeah, Morrison was still in the ring. The flapjack on Morrison. Morrison, he just launched himself straight up perfectly flat for like the whole way down. John Morrison is amazing. He is Johnny. He should be Johnny Mundo forever. Johnny Mundo. Fight forever, Johnny Mundo. Johnny, he, oh, he's so amazing, though. Jeez. How WWE manages to screw up John Morrison is freaking unbelievable. Um, although he is working, though. And probably making a pile of money, so you can't fault him for that. Then there was a double caterpillar by both Otis and Braun. That was just fun. Miz comes in. He puts the front face lock in on Otis. Wears Otis down. Again, the yes kicks. The corner splashes. Eventually, Braun gets a hot tag. Yeah, Morrison gets in. He tries He tries some strikes. Uh, then he goes against the ropes. Braun catches him. Power slam. Match over. Uh, Otis and Braun Strowman win. Mandy Rose comes in. Otis kind of teases. Uh, I'm catching. He's like, oh, no, 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 no. The fist bump. I like that. Mandy Rose is there. Um, Miz is just his trash talking. I'll tell you what. It's a, because of the sterile environment, the, the trash talking and whatever the Miz says is just amplified. Like that one spot calling was really obvious. But when they do the trash talking, it, it, fill, it, it fills something. It fills a void. Um, of course, Mandy Rose came in. Otis gave her a big hug. He got a peck on the cheek. He's like, yeah. Uh, then he tries to talk Otis into, he, talks to, he tries to talk Brand, uh, Mandy Rose into giving Braun the fist bump. And, and like, Braun's like, okay, whatever. Um, it was a, it's getting Otis and Braun win. It's a ham sandwich of a match. Very quickly, just to get into next week. Um, next week's actually a pretty simple week. It's wrestling shows every day. Monday, I will be here. Be doing my Monday Night Raw recap. Uh, Tuesday, be live stream because that is, of course, a that is, of course, Impact. They let me do stuff. AW is going to be Wednesday. Thursday, it's going to be a predictions. I'm going to bring back El Vagabundo. Hobodos to give his predictions about AW Saturday. Um, Friday night, it's still going to be a re reaction show. Saturday, I'm up in the air. If I can resolve certain technical issues, it'll be a reaction show, because I might have some friends over. They'll see us react on the couch while eating piles of food while watching AEW up on said screen. If not, it'll just be a normal review. I'll do that later that night, depending what condition I'm in. Sunday, I'm off. And yep, that's it for next week. 
I'd like to thank everyone for sticking with me through these trying times. Maybe next.